If you want to become a better writer, you need to increase your vocabulary. And when you look at great authors like David Foster Wallace or Cormac McCarthy, one of the reasons they are great is because they have elegant variation with how they use their words. But I'm not here today to give you guys a middle school prescription and say, go get a dictionary or a book of vocab words and start learning more because that is most likely not going to work. But instead, I'm going to be giving you guys some tips myself and we're going to be hearing from David Foster Wallace on why vocabulary is important and how you can increase it. And if you guys don't already know, this is the headquarters of everything related to David Foster Wallace here on YouTube. Go check out the playlist down below for more videos on Wallace. So let's hear Wallace's thoughts on increasing your vocabulary. One, plain language doesn't mean all little monosyllabic words. The general rule of thumb is that you use the very smallest word that will do in a particular situation. Sometimes the situation you're describing is specific and technical, and a small word won't do. Probably the other big thing is that there's this thing called elegant variation. You have to be able, in order for your sen sentences not to make the reader's eyes glaze over, you can't simply use the same core set of words, particularly important nouns and verbs, over and over and over again. You have to have synonyms at your fingertips and alternative constructions at your fingertips. And usually, though not in the sense of memorizing vocab words like we like when we were kids, but having a larger vocabulary is usually the best way to do that, the best. Having a good vocabulary ups the chances that we are going to be able to know the right word, even if that's the plainest word that will do, and to achieve some kind of elegant variation, which I'm kind of a fiend for. And I would 100% agree with Wallace. A lot of you guys are probably not that beginner of writers that you are using words over and over again, but it's more common than you think. I know writers who have MFAs that don't really understand this idea of elegant vari variation. And so if we, there are a couple different options here. And the easiest and the first thing that you should do right now, if you don't already have it, is you need to buy the Oxford American Writers Thesaur Thesaurus. And I have had, look what I've done to this thing. I have used this thing every single day for at least seven or eight years. And I don't want to get a new one because I've just used this so much. And what's cool about this one is that Wallace actually has entries in this edition on all types of words. And the best way to learn new vocabulary is to just sit here and not use an online thesaurus because being able, when you're writing online, if you are at this hyper speed. And if you're going online, there's a high chance that you're going to get distracted and you're leaving the writing screen. But looking at the paper book is important, first of all, because this is a great collection of words. This is meant for writers and it really only has the best words in here. But second, and this is really how I use it, is that each story has certain words and themes that are very important to it. For instance, I was I was writing a short story a couple weeks ago that had a lot to do with water. And so I found every single variation that of, of water and wrote them all down and had them next to me. I only used maybe 5% of those words, but it was nice to see and nice to kind of plug in some of these words and see if they actually worked because sometimes these very obtruse ob, 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 words are like, magical and they work really well. And so I do this all of the time. And eventually you start to memorize words. You start to realize certain variations and start to learn, for instance, transition words, something that a lot of writers struggle with or don't struggle with if they're too logical, but a lot of more of the creative types that have these beautiful stories, but maybe not the writing ability to follow, they struggle with transition words. So learning all the variations of transition words over time will make sure that you can just kind of plug those in and move on with the story and know that your reader is following you. And once again, I can't reiterate how much of a hack this is. I'm writing a story right now that has to do with cyclical stuff and spiraling. And if I just wrote that story with just the common words and I wasn't getting into words like helix and stuff like that, then it would be significantly worse. And so the second way that you guys can learn to increase your vocabulary. And so the link is down in the description below for this Oxford writing thesaurus, I would say everyone should go and get this. And another thing that everyone should always have is a usage dictionary, Garner's Modern American Usage, third edition I would recommend because it has some great essays at the front that the fourth edition doesn't have. Everyone needs a usage dictionary and a thesaurus and probably a normal dictionary. If you care about making your writing layered and contrasted, like you, you, there is nothing better than having those three, three books on your table while you are writing. Okay, so moving on to step number two, which is kind of, so we're kind of having a, a thesaurus is the short-term plan. It's instant. This is now the middle of the road plan. 
And this is more unconscious, and it's just reading a lot. A lot of writers don't read as much as they should. I mean, there are some writers out there who never write and call themselves writers, and they're just actually readers fronting as writers. But most writers need to be reading a lot more because it, first of all, shows you the, this idea of elegant variation in practice. And if you start to understand the elements of writing, if you start to read usage dictionaries and understand sentence structure and how plot works and characterization, then as you're reading, you can kind of track what's going on. And that's just unconsciously training you. It's almost like you're watching tape because you have to be able to read as a writer. You are no longer reading for fun. If you want to read a book for fun, fine. But as you're reading, you are now training yourself. And that's why you should always be imitating passages or um, something of that sort with authors that you really like. If you read something and it moves you, you should imitate just a couple lines just to see how they did it. And eventually, if you imitate and read a bunch of people, you'll have elegant variation in your writing style ability. Okay, so now let's move on to step number three, which is kind of the long-term play. But a lot of authors have done it, and that is the straight-up memorization of words. And when you look at guys like Cormac McCarthy or William Faulkner, they had seemingly a lot of the Oxford English Dictionary, which spans over um, 10 different uh, books, which is out of print now and costs over easily over $1,000 if you're trying to get the full set. And obviously you don't need that. But you could tell that Wallace has a strong vocabulary, that he obviously uses a thesaurus and whatnot. But when he speaks and, and, what, and stuff, you can hear that he's done some form of memorization, probably because he's so weird as a kid and stuff. And so I don't think picking up a dictionary necessarily and reading it, unless you are very committed, is what you need to do. But you need to find a group of words that maybe that you don't know or that are useful to writers and start perusing through them. And this would probably be more of a recommendation for beginner writers or writers who haven't been readers or who are just kind of getting into the game. And I think it would be massively useful because a lot of people don't understand especially when we start kind of going into Eng uh, English or British English and stuff, the amount of words that exist in English and the amount of variation that you can do, even without making it too complicated. Because every single word kind of has its uh, spiritual or kind of woo-woo energy behind it. And when you use it, it evokes something unconsciously in the reader. And so that's kind of the point of using different words is that as you're doing it, how does it make you feel? How does it sound? How does it flow into the sentence structure and the paragraph? And when you have more words available, then you have more words to try. And this kind of goes back to the idea of heavy revisions. You can write like Charles Bukowski or like the Beat Poets and just kind of write and put your stuff out there. But you're never really going to become famous or really achieve any success because there have been generations of writers behind you who have microed every single sentence, who once their novel is done, they've gone back and used their massive knowledge of vocabulary and sentence structure, plot characterization, and combined all that together to figure out this just one sentence. And then they did that for every single sentence in the novel. And then re-looked back at it and look how, you know, and did that time and time again. And so people don't understand the time that it takes and the idea that every sentence is important. Every sentence must be a hit to the heart or at least be leading to one because why waste the reader's time? You're making, making someone read your work. So how have you guys out there increased your vocabulary? How do you guys integrate this idea of elegant variation within your work? And thank you guys for being here. And if you are writing today, then good luck. And I hope you guys find a good flow. Peace.